Why do we have chins? No idea. But, but, where is my chin? Oh, I'm some. Firstly, it is believed that chins relieve our jaws from the stress that they encounter while chewing food. Secondly, it is believed that our tongues may be putting a lot of stress on our jaws while speaking. Now our chin may be acting as a reinforcing bone, which resists that pressure. Thirdly, it is believed that chins exist to help us attract mates. Lastly, according to one theory, our ancestors had bigger faces. We evolved into smaller ones, and our chins are still gradually shrinking. Hmm. Why were zebras never domesticated? No problem. I'm some. We'll take care of this. Huh? Oh, I'm some. Firstly, zebras are known to have one of the strongest kicks in the animal kingdom. Secondly, zebras are known to have an extremely powerful bite. Thirdly, as compared to horses, it is extremely difficult to capture a zebra using a lasso, as zebras have a very efficient built-in ducking reflex. Hmm. Lastly, horses have a strong family structure. If the head of the family is captured, then the rest of the family follows him. The same is not the case with a zebra. Huh? Hmm. Why does a bubble pop? They don't pop. Omsum makes them pop. Huh? Oh, Omsum! Bubbles form because of a special property of water molecules to attract and stick to each other. These attractive forces between water molecules produce what's called surface tension. This surface tension, along with the air pressure from inside and outside the bubble, create a fragile equilibrium and keep the bubble from popping. <laughs> However, huh? since the equilibrium is fragile, just a gust of wind easily breaks the surface tension, thus breaking the bubble layer and causing the bubble to pop. Hmm. Why huh? does soap make bubbles? No big deal. Om Sum's bubbles are the biggest. Oh, Om um, Sum. The answer lies in the chemistry of soap molecules. The two opposite ends of the soap molecules behave extremely differently. On one hand, there is an end known as the hydrophilic end. This end attracts water. While on the other hand, there is an end known as the hydrophobic end. This end repels water. Hmm. Now when we mix soap with water, these opposite ends of the soap molecules sandwich a thin layer of water between themselves. This basically leads to the creation of a thin film that contains a small amount of air. And this is what we call a bubble. Hmm. Why are sharks boneless? No big deal. Even Omsum doesn't have bones. Oh, Omsum. The skeleton of sharks is actually made of cartilage. Cartilage is the same stuff that our ears and nose are made up of. Now, cartilage is less dense than bones. Hence, it is much lighter, making sharks weigh less and thus helping them stay afloat. Hmm. Also, as the cartilage is flexible, it gives shark the ability to swim quickly and catch its prey. Hmm. Finally, the skeleton made of cartilage heals faster than that made of bones. Hence, sharks are boneless. Hmm. Are huh? smartphones bad for our eyes? Don't worry. Just watch Omsum on your smartphones. Oh, Omsum. We hold smartphones too close to our eyes and also stare at them for prolonged periods. Hence, it puts strain on our eyes. Besides this, smartphone screens predominantly emit blue light. Now, our eyes are built to absorb the harmful ultraviolet rays coming from the sun thus protecting the inner sensitive membrane called retina. Hmm. But our eyes are not good at absorbing blue light emitted by smartphones. Huh? Hence, the blue light hits the retina and produces toxic substances which slowly begin to damage the retina. Hence, long-term exposure to blue light from smartphones may affect our vision. Hmm. Why do we have different eye colors? No big deal. Omsum's eyes are multicolored. Oh, Omsum! The colored part of our eye is called iris. Iris contains a pigment called melanin. Melanin is of two types, phyomelanin and eumelanin. The color of our eyes is dependent on the amount and type of melanin produced. 
If we have more melanin with higher concentration of eumelanin, then we will have darker eye color, huh? such as brown. However, if we have less melanin with higher concentration of phyomelanin, then we will probably have blue or green eyes. Where does wind come from? Simple, Aum Sum keeps it trapped in this box. Oh, Aum Sum. During daytime, air present above land heats up much faster, as compared to air present above the surface of rivers and oceans. The heated air above land expands and rises up. The cooler air from the oceans rushes in and takes its place, resulting in a sea breeze. Now, at night, inland temperatures drop, making oceans relatively warmer than land. Hence, air above oceans expands and rises up. The cooler air from land rushes in to take its place, resulting in a land breeze. In this way, wind is born. Why is ketchup so hard to pour? Simple, because nobody is as strong as Aum Sum. Oh, Aum Sum. Firstly, as compared to water, ketchup has a higher viscosity. Viscosity is the resistance of a fluid to flowing. That means ketchup provides more resistance to flowing as compared to water. Ketchup consists of many ingredients. But if we look closely, the solid parts of the ketchup, as in the tomato bits, are actually touching each other. This physical connection of the tomato bits gives ketchup the strength to resist flowing. Hence, ketchup is so hard to pour. Do the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans mix? Absolutely not! I have told them not to! Oh! Aum Sum! The answer is density. Density huh? is the measure of mass present per unit volume. Lesser the density, lighter will be the object. Hmm. The Atlantic Ocean contains much more salt, as a result of which it is much denser. On the other hand, the water in the Pacific Ocean is less salty, hence its density is much lower. Now, this difference in density due to salinity creates a kind of barrier called a halocline between the two oceans. As a result, both the oceans don't mix that easily. Hmm. What happens to old satellites? Simple. They become Umsum's toys. Huh? Oh, Umsum. There are a couple of options. It all depends upon how high the satellite is. For the satellites which are closer to Earth, scientists may use the last bit of remaining fuel to slow the satellite down. This way the satellite will fall out of orbit and burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. For the satellites which are much higher, it will take a lot of fuel to slow them down enough to fall back into the Earth's atmosphere. Hence, for these satellites, it takes a lot less fuel to simply blast them further into space to die. Hmm.